Run game will look a little different next season after signing Josh Jacobs and releasing Aaron Jones. They made this move maybe with the physicality of Jacobs and durability he brings in mind to the position, despite the fact that Jones had been a productive option for years. <laughs> Here's head coach Matt LaFleur on the running back position in Green Bay. It kind of caught me off guard too, to be honest with you. I mean, certainly I knew that there was. Sure, you was a target. Though. There was, yeah, and I mean, there was there was some other things in play, obviously with with Aaron Jones, and um, I didn't quite know how everything was going to go, and it just happened um, really fast on that Monday. They came down, and I don't know all the the details of that. I, you know, I'm not involved in in those types of conversations. So, um, but yeah, we were super excited. Let's bring in our Packers reporter Rob Domofsky here. And uh, Rob, how quickly did that running back room come together last month? Yeah, Laura, the it caught me off guard comment that Matt LaFleur made last week at the NFL meetings has certainly gotten some attention, but it's a sign of just how quickly things can change in free agency. It wasn't that LaFleur didn't know Josh Jacobs had been in their discussions. If they couldn't come to an agreement with Aaron Jones on a pay cut, the surprise I'm told from people in the building was that they just had to pivot so fast that they were able to do it to Jacobs once Jones turned down the pay cut. LaFleur, look, like a lot of coaches, he's not involved in the dollar amounts, the talk of pay cuts. Uh, but he, like many in the organization, Laura, went into the offseason thinking that Aaron Jones would be their running back. In Jacobs, though, LaFleur said they have a tough, hard-nosed back who is a high-volume guy. And given how Aaron Jones has battled injuries over the last year or so, Maybe Jacobs is a better option for them from that standpoint. Yeah, it makes sense, Rob. Thanks for the insight there. We're glad to have you on the show. Jacobs averaged just three and a half yards per rush last season, which ranked 44th in the NFL. All right, hang tight because Rob's coming back. Packers made some major moves this offseason, bringing in Josh Jacobs and safety Xavier McKinney, but that, that meant that they did let Aaron Jones and Darnell Savage leave in free agency. They also lost John Runyon and David Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari played 11 seasons for the Packers, but he managed to play just 13 games in the last three seasons dealing with so many injuries Dan coming off an impressive year but where do they need to improve to to make a deeper run in the playoffs it felt like there was so much going for them keep it together I'm gonna try, here. I'm gonna try. Um, how do they get better next year yeah I, I do think that it'll be interesting to see if the in your face man coverage aggressive defensive um, kind of philosophy from Jeff Halfley really transforms this defense you know when when their complaints about Green Bay or the past couple of years was this third down defense and man, they would give up so many easy conversions and they wouldn't take the ball away and they couldn't get after the quarterback. Well, if Halfley's able, who comes over as the ex Boston College head coach, longtime NFL defensive coach, and they get better on third down and they can take the football away a little more and they can get after some quarterbacks. If you really look at this offense last year, when Jordan Love started to heat up, they became really efficient. They were really good with time of possession. They created and generated a ton of explosive plays. So how football is connected, Marcus, you know this. Ruddy, you know this. Like, okay, an offense that's efficient, they control the game. They control line of scrimmage and they're explosive on offense. And if they get off the field on third down and they can get off the quarterback and take away football, you're talking about not a good team but a dominant team. And I think that will be really what we have to pay attention to in Green Bay, that defense and how the aggression changes it. Yeah, what makes sense for me, Dan, and, and I agree 100% with what you just said, but after we watch Jordan Love make his playoff run and late in that season, the number one priority becomes his protection, right? And I know Bakhtiari departed, but he hadn't played much. The question that I want to see answered is Rasheed Walker going to be who they feel confident, who started at left tackle, tackle most yeah. of the season last year, to protect his blind side at left tackle? Or do you go and you try mm -hmm. to find your franchise guy that's going to grow along with Jordan Love and this young core that they have from an offensive standpoint. And I'll say this, man, right now, I think offensive line is the need, but just something mm. that I want to put out there for the Green Bay Packers. I'm not sure if this receiving core doesn't become one of the best by the time the season ends mm. next year. The way that these guys played and stepped up and the number of playmakers with, with Christian um, Watkins being absent for a majority down the stretch, 
they can be devastating. As long as he's protected, I think the Green Bay Packers are a true contender in the NFC. Yeah, let's get Rob back in here because, as you see, Green Bay has the number 25 overall pick in the draft. You, you heard, Rob, the guys talking about offense, defense. Do you get any sense, the bigger need from the Packers standpoint, what they think they're going to do with that uh, first-round draft pick? Well, Laura, it's more than just that pick at 25. They have five picks in the first three rounds. Yeah. That's five in the top 91, thanks to a couple of trades. So they can do a lot of what Dan and Marcus were talking about. It is easy to forget that David Bakhtiari walked out that door because he hadn't played since the first game of last season. But this is a five-time All-Pro, and they're going to make an investment this spring, this summer, in Jordan Love. He's going to end up getting 40, 45, 50 million a year. And to sit there and say that Rasheed Walker, who played well, but was a seventh-round pick in 2022, is the blindside protector of Jordan Love from here on out, may be a stretch. The Packers have said they want competition there. And then real quickly on defense, when they switched, the last time they made a major switch defensively like this, they went from a 4-3 to a 3-4 in 2009 when Dom Capers came in. They drafted two guys in the first round, B.J. Raji and Clay Matthews, mm. because they needed a nose tackle and an Clay edge Matthews. rusher to fit that scheme. What they need in this scheme right now, they, they did get one of those in Xavier McKinney, a downhill, wide-ranging safety. But they need Safeties. some linebackers to go along with Quay Walker. So don't be surprised. And we know Brian Gutekunst's penchant for drafting defensive yeah. players high in the, in the draft. So don't be surprised <laughs> if it's a defensive guy early on. Yeah, right.